Hello and welcome to Being Boss, episode number 89. This episode is brought to you by FreshBooks Cloud Accounting. Being boss in work and life is being in it. It's being who we are, doing the work, breaking some rules, and even though we each have to do it on our own, being boss is knowing we're in it together. Hey guys, we are chatting with you. Emily and I are actually together. Yeah. We're at a mastermind retreat with Tara Gentili in rural Pennsylvania. Would you call this rural? No, this is not rural, honey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are cornfields I mean, and soybean fields. We're surrounded very near to us by rural Pennsylvania. It's we're, not far. We're in like a really cute bed and breakfast. We were sitting in a room... That is covered in floral wallpaper. It's it's straight up tulip wallpaper. We're sleeping in the attic <laughs> in two little twin size beds. It's very flowers in the attic. It is. With a little less incest. <laughs> a lot less incest, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, this house is pretty awesome. I went around earlier and had to check out all the trees because <laughs> it's beautiful. It's totally beautiful. But we thought that we would use this opportunity to record a podcast together. And this is a very kind of timely episode. Well, okay, let me tell you what we're talking about first. (laughs) Today we are chatting about what to do when your metrics suck. Specifically your blogging metrics, but this could also apply to your podcast, growing your newsletter, and in general creating content that is being consumed and shared by your following. And I don't know, maybe even in some ways it could apply to your bottom line, like your money, anything that you could measure that you want more of. But mostly what we're talking about today is creating content that gets good metrics. And the reason why we're talking about this today is because just yesterday I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed. We have a lot on our plate. We're working on a book proposal that is due on Monday. I don't even think that Emily has started writing yet. I have a little bit, but is it really Monday? Yeah. Shit. So (laughs) (laughs) we've got some work to do. So in our Slack channel, I said, hey, I'm going to not do any blog posts for being boss for maybe the next couple of weeks while I'm really focusing on this. And Emily said, okay, but what are we going to do with that Thursday content? Because my posts always go up on Thursday. And I said, well, you know what? We're just not going to have it. <laughs> and she spouted out. Consistency breeds legitimacy. <laughs> and I said, a spread thin creative breeds resentment and suicidal tendencies. <laughs> not to make a joke about that. But really, I mean, you know, none of us feel creative whenever we're feeling spread thin. And I'm dedicating a lot of writing energy to emails and this book proposal but then Emily pointed out (laughs) but then um so I've been watching the metrics for the blog posts and been noticing that um like I like to watch and see what of our content is doing really great what gets lots of hits what like has lots of traction and um there's been a little trend with some of Kathleen's blog posts that they haven't really been as popular as most of our other content so I very lovingly tried to let her know that, look, some of your topics or some of your blog posts aren't getting good traction. Like, you, it's okay for you to take a break from this, to put your energy where it needs to go. And um, and it really hurt my feelings. <laughs> and then I think it made Kathleen cry. I totally cried. I cried all afternoon. I Okay, so here's why. And then, and then I felt bad for feeling bad because... It really isn't personal, and I have a lot of feelings about metrics that we'll go into, but I was just feeling bad because I felt like I was being called out on maybe half-assing it, and I don't even know if that's true or not because truly I like to give my all to everything, but if I'm doing a lot of things, my all is very limited. So hurt feelings we ended up after that recording a really great podcast with a really great guest we chatted it out a little bit but then I thought wouldn't it be fun if we talked about what to do whenever your metrics suck (laughs) here live because it's an actual conversation that we need to be having and we thought we might as well do it on air 
Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I want to point out, too, you followed up with saying something that I think has a lot of credit here and that, you know, you don't want your worth tied up into metrics, which I think is super spot on. And it's something we'll get to in this episode as well. But I do think that using metrics to make sure you're putting your time and energy into things that are going to be fruitful for you or the most fruitful for you is how you is how you really manage your time in a way that that brings you the kind of results that you want. So we're going to be talking about several things in terms of metrics today, diving into why they're really important and how you can use them to make good decisions, but also when you should just ditch them and throw them out the window. And we're going to be sharing the tactics that we will be doing next to improve our metrics. And then we'll close by telling you why maybe metrics aren't so important. So hang with us here. All right, I want to pause here for a second because another super touchy and sometimes emotionally charged metric is that of money. I know it can make you want to run for the hills and bury your head in the sand, but being boss is being boss enough to look at your money. FreshBooks Cloud Accounting makes it so easy to see what's coming in and what's going out whenever it comes to your money and your bank account. It's super intuitive and easy to use. FreshBooks makes it super visual. You do not have to be an accountant to know what is going on with the financial health of your business. Go to freshbooks.com slash being boss and enter being boss in the how did you hear about us section to try your free trial today. I promise it will take your business to a whole new level once you really start paying attention to the money going in and out of your business and your bank account. All right, back to our episode. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about why metrics are important. Ugh. I love me- metrics I are important because they make me happy. <laughs> I like metrics because they they give you a really good look at what's going on in your business, in your online business at any given moment. And that's really kind of my favorite thing about online business is you have access to so many metrics. So they're really important because they allow you to make really good decisions about your business based on past performance of whatever it is that you're putting out into the internet. And listen, I used to not care about metrics at all. I think, what was it, two or three years ago, I wrote a blog post saying why I'm ditching Google Analytics or something ridiculous like that. At the same time, Emily was probably writing a blog post on how to track your Google Analytics to <laughs> drive data decisions. But um, <laughs> and, and I will get into why I don't put a whole lot of stock or self-worth in the metrics and numbers that I'm pulling in. But whenever we started being boss, we knew that we were creating something bigger than ourselves. And we knew that we were creating a brand that could really have big impact on a lot of creative entrepreneurs. And in order to have the kind of growth and visibility and reach and impact that we have goals for, we have to pull in those numbers. It's so important to attract more dream clients, sponsors. We're writing a book to get people to buy our book, to get people to buy our online courses. Um, to create a flourishing community, even if they're not spending a lot of money with us, they're connecting with each other and creating projects. I mean, that's been my favorite thing lately. Anyway, going off on a tangent there, we simply have to pull in those numbers and look at our metrics and make decisions, informed decisions based on our performance in order to grow our brand the way that we want to. And I'm not saying that like I'm not sometimes at odds with that. Because sometimes I feel as if all of our decisions are super calculated, it doesn't leave a lot of room for creativity or exploration or trying out new things. Absolutely. And I think that I think that's one of the fun things about being a creative entrepreneur is that you can use the data however you want. So you can use it to see what's working and what's not working. But if the thing that's working is something that you don't enjoy doing, then do something completely different. Um, so so yeah, we can talk about how data should drive decisions. Um, but it doesn't have to drive every decision. I think I think data is just part of it. I think it's a good place to begin. It's a good place for you to go and see what is happening and then use your gut to make the rest of the decision. But 
it allows you to make a more informed decision than not looking at your analytics and just going off of every whim and hoping that it works. The great thing about doing business online is you have tons of data at your fingertips and you can use it to help shape your business in a way that it's that you know it's already gaining traction or if things aren't working you can pull away from those if you want. Yeah, I mean, I loved whenever we were brainstorming this topic and really kind of getting our thoughts together on paper. One thing that you said is that data drives what has been working, but that you have to leave room for new trends and patterns. You have to be able to explore what's next for you. And you can't do that without risking things or trying new things. Because you're not going to be ahead of the curve if you're always looking in the rear view mirror. You have to be looking ahead at what you want to do, not just what has been working in the past. Just because you've been on your MySpace getting at it for years <laughs> doesn't mean that MySpace is going to be the cool place in the future. So always looking ahead at future trends, I think, is just as important as looking back at what has worked in the past. Okay, so yesterday, whenever I was having my pity party for myself, I started looking at some of our analytics, and I saw that some of the stuff that was working were things that I really enjoy putting my time in, like our podcasts themselves. I This is my favorite thing that we do. I think that part of the reason why we launched a blog is because we both really missed writing, and we both have a very strong blog background, and so it makes me wonder how much I was trying to fit an old passion into a new way of working. I mean, we can't really entirely look back before before how we were doing things because everything has changed. And so one of the things that you mentioned was, you know, probably one of my lowest performing articles um, was around, I think I wrote something around girl bosses that are funny and made a list. And it was the kind of thing that I would have written about on AnnKathleen.com maybe like three or four years ago. I used to have, I even actually used to have a series called um, Girl Crush. And so I kind of was trying to bring back the spirit of that. And it's just a good reminder that you can't beat a dead horse. Is that the phrase? <laughs> I think that one fits here. I, I get what like, you're saying. Was I was I beating a dead horse by trying to bring back an old blog series that I love doing, but that isn't really serving our audience now, or really serving the kind of content that I, you know, I've I've kind of elevated my game a little bit, and maybe writing about funny bosses, like maybe I should just be reading their books, and that's good enough, or writing about them in a new way where I'm doing a more elaborate book review or I mean, even then. Oh, even <laughs> then, right? Screw a book review. Let's write our book. But that's how I got Brene Brown as a client, writing a book review on her book. Right? So just saying that works sometimes. I just want to be friends with Chelsea Handler is all. <laughs> I just Chelsea Handler, please call her. Um, right? So then let's talk about what we're going to do next. So we we pulled some metrics. We saw what or we saw what was happening. And what uh, what can be improved? So let's talk about let's talk about what we do next. So we, right. So like we looked at our co schedule, but we haven't necessarily pulled up our Google Analytics to look at traffic. I think that what co schedule is showing us is how many shares we were getting, mm -hmm. um, which is totally valid and important. But it will be interesting to look at Google Analytics and see if any of the patterns that we uncover there change the story that we're telling ourselves right now about my metric sucking. Maybe this is hopeful thinking. Right. Well, and, and I will like this is not super top of mind, but I've been watching it some and and it's pretty similar to what's in co-schedule. Like shareability is relatively mirrored in terms of website traffic. Um, and what it shows is, you know, our podcast are really the meat of what being boss is. So not even like the downloads, but the show notes visits on our website. Um, so in that, knowing that putting some good energy into creating our really great episodes, like our, our chalkboard method episode was one that was um, super popular recently. Um, and a couple of really big guest interviews have been really popular and have maintained popularity. Um so that was really good in reconfirming that one of that the thing that we do put our most energy into um, and that we do also enjoy the most on an ongoing basis is the thing that is still serving us the best. You know, it almost makes me wonder if 
if I'm putting more of my energy in the podcast and that's what I really love doing, I wonder if we literally invest in having those podcasts transcribed. It's something that we've kicked around a little bit, but that could almost replace, if you think about it, the content that would go into a blog post. And if my blog posts that are topical around the podcast episode aren't doing well, or maybe they're completely off topic, um, it might be worthwhile just transcribing our actual podcast to get the kind of traction that we want online, on the internet, with words. So in that case, dear listeners... If you guys are interested, because this is totally something Kathleen and I have thrown around multiple times in the past year and a half, is whether or not we want to transcribe it. And we always just figured that you guys didn't really care. But, like, if you are someone who's interested in us transcribing these episodes um, and would read them or download them, shoot us an email. Hello at beingboss.club. Just say, hey, I want transcribed. We'll keep a tally. We probably won't reply, so don't get too excited. We get lots of emails, but let us know and we'll certainly keep a tally. And if there's enough of them, I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, one of the things that we've always said and always believe in or are especially learning as we are growing in our own businesses and growing in our roles as um, the grand visionaries of where we want to go with this is that we really should double down on what's working and where our strengths are. And so if our strengths are with our podcast, let's double down on it. And that I think that that's a really great way to do it. Um, Some other ways that we're using our time really well and what's working is our community engagement. So we have the Being Boss Clubhouse, and I'm definitely in there every day talking to our clubhouse members and really engaging with them and answering their questions, but also hopping on Facebook Live. I would love to get more consistent about that. So let's say I'm not blogging um, every week, but maybe creating an agenda for a Facebook Live video that helps drive traffic to our Facebook page so that we can better run ads and get engagement there. Like that might be a worthwhile use of time. And it's definitely something that I enjoy doing. I've always talked about a YouTube channel. <laughs> I just need Facebook Live. <laughs> right. That's all you need. And and I think that's the key here is like if you're doing something that's not working, that's not getting you like one, the numbers or metrics that you want or two, isn't bringing you the kind of joy that other things in your business are brainstorm like using metrics as a way to give you almost permission to think about what else you could be doing is a great way to just find yourself a really happy role in your business I think I just have a hard time letting go of blogging I I got my start to my entire career my career not be where it is without blogging so it's kind of like my first love right and I've moved on beyond my first love but I'm still like carrying that torch a little bit so I think that I miss blogging but whenever I think about it what I really miss is writing and I am writing whenever I do look at it I'm writing a ton of emails I'm writing newsletters that are practically every Tuesday we send out a newsletter that lets our listeners know that the episode is live. But even beyond that, um, I'm kind of sharing some behind the scenes of what went down in the episode, why I really enjoyed recording it, and what kind of top line things I learned from the guests that we interview or the conversations that we've had together. Um, I also love creating worksheets for our newsletter list. And if you guys are interested in getting on our newsletter, go to beingboss.club and you can sign up there because it's about so much more than just getting those metrics up. It really is about making communication so much easier to our tribe and letting them know everything that's going down. Um, so yeah, I mean, I am writing, oh, and we're writing a book. I was about to say, don't forget that book we're writing. So that is certainly a place where, you know, even already, you've mentioned it a couple of times, taking time away from blogging so you can focus on the book. And so, you know, if blogging was something that was super important to you, then you would make time for both of them. I think also, okay, so for example, whenever I got off my flight today, I met Emily in baggage claim. And I told her, hey, I have an idea. Maybe I should write a blog post about what to do whenever your metrics suck. But whenever what's working for me and what really gets me excited is recording a podcast, then I thought, well, we should just, we're together. Let's record a podcast about it. So that's another example of something that I could have written a blog about that may have gotten really terrible engagement and really terrible metrics, but might do really well on iTunes or um, on SoundCloud or, you know, it might be shared all over Pinterest. 
feel free to give us a rating and review on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so so I think that I, I think that the moral of all of this is like using metrics so that you can get really clear on what's working and what's not working, but also using your own like mind and gut to do it in ways that that you enjoy doing it and that you know will work for you um because like we've looked at and also like looking at the kinds of content that gets the most traction because you have had several blog posts that have done really really well and they're around things that I know you really love talking about so for example again our chalkboard method episode is really popular right now um but also the follow-up blog post that you did about the chalkboard method is one of our one like highest visited uh, blog post, but also it's a really high converting blog post in terms of their in, in terms of the fact that there are a lot of people signing up for the newsletter from there. So I think there it's about sharing what you know best and the things that you have energy around. Chalkboard method is something that you gab about all the time. So it's something because you enjoy it works, a lot. people. It- <laughs> The chalkboard method works, and I did create a worksheet. So that's another thing. I love creating a worksheet. And so maybe if I'm only blogging or attaching a worksheet, like spending the time I would have spent blogging, creating a worksheet for an episode, I mean, I could just do that instead. Um, And I think it's not just about sharing what you know best and what you have energy around, but it's also about sharing on platforms that excite you. So the platforms that excite me are podcasting and Facebook Live. And I would love to give even just a little bit more energy into making my Facebook Live posts a little bit more organized and impactful. Um, And then, you know, even things like speaking live and connecting with people in real life and uh, creating content for live workshops for being boss. Mm-hmm. Like that's the stuff that really excites me. And it still includes a lot of writing. Again, I'm, I'm just having a hard time letting go of blogging. And I used to be so good at it. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too, is that it doesn't, nothing ever has to be a final decision. Like let's say we get this book proposal done. So you take a break from blogging for a couple of weeks we get this book proposal finished and then designed beautifully because that's your job and (laughs) and then we get it sent out and then you are like renewed you're empowered because we have this book proposal behind us and you're ready to come back and blow out some more chalkboard method posts and we've gotten like a million dollar advance right let's just put that out into the universe (laughs) let's go ahead and and just set that up for success um so you know Maybe it is something where it's just you have other things on your plate at the moment. And because you do, we both like they're just there. We have so many plates and then they're all filled just to the top. Um, But you don't have to stay away from blogging forever. You can come back whenever you're like ready to blow it. Nope. Not blow it. Whenever, <laughs> whenever blow, you're I'll ready to, it. what is it? Hit it out of the park? Is is that what it is? I was going to say blow it out of the when park and that's not When how. you're ready to sink to the bottom of the ocean and drown (laughs) um speaking of blog posts hey you know it'd be a cool blog post that you could write what is how to read your metrics like and how to actually uncover those patterns because that's something we've been talking a lot about in this episode and I think it comes really natural to us and there might be a lot of listeners I mean not that I should be giving you any blogging direction But I think that it is uh, it is good for people who shy away from using data to make informed decisions because it's just it can be a little tricky turning data into what what am I trying to say like a concept that you can that you can make decisions around, right? Right. So um, that would be like a really cool. Maybe I'll read that post and learn something. <laughs> I'll show you how to use your analytics. I'll show you. No, I think that's great because I know analytics can be super overwhelming for a lot of people and especially creative. Some, I think it's a part of the creative brain. How did I get both the creative brain and also like the super analytic? I don't I have I a mean, magic brain. I think that we, I think that uh, actually a lot of creative entrepreneurs who are successful have both. And I usually come off as like the flighty creative, but. What's think- your password for? Um- <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know my passwords, but I can organize a Dropbox folder, Dropbox folder like a boss. <laughs> we all have our skills. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I think that analytics, 
I think that analytics can be really tricky for some creatives, and it's just knowing a couple key things to look at to to move forward. I mean, a couple of my favorite things are looking at uh, looking at your just top pages that are visited, and then using that to shape future content. So if you have a blog post or two that is super um, super high performing, doing follow up to those posts. Um, Finding the topics that people are searching for and landing on your site for and doing some topics or writing some blog posts or doing some content around that. Um, Look for what's relevant and go there. If it's something that you want to write about, don't write about like I always get. I have a couple of weird search terms that always show up on my website. They're just like random ass things. Like those are not going to be things that I write blog posts about. But I have one blog post that I wrote years ago. It was like, I don't know. It was like eight characteristics of a successful businesswoman or something like like when I go back and read it now I'm so disgusted but it is one of my highest performing blog posts and that's something like I could totally see myself a couple years later revisiting and doing more content around it so um so using your analytics in that way to see what pages and topics are most visited on your site but also what search terms get people to your site and using that to shape future content or future products or services um is the most basic way of using your analytics to make some decisions I really love looking at my analytics in ConvertKit and so in my email system and really looking at which emails are being opened and really looking for trends there. What kind of headlines am I using? How long are the actual emails? Are they tactic based or are they kind of more philosophical or concept based? Um, Really looking at how I'm structuring those and what I'm asking of my followers to do next. So I like using analytics in that way. What else do you want to talk about? Okay, so another thing that we might try next that I wanted to touch on too is looking at CoSchedule. So CoSchedule is an app that we use in WordPress to post, to kind of maintain an editorial calendar and post our blog posts. And schedule social media around those blog posts. We are not being paid by CoSchedule. Though I wouldn't mind. No, co-schedule. Give us a call. We use you and we love you. (laughs) So one thing that's cool is that we can look at co-schedule to see the social shareability. So one thing I thought that I could do is ask or even tell people to share and pen our content. So just like I sometimes ask you guys to rate and review this podcast, which if you haven't done that in a while or if you've never rated and reviewed our podcast and you love it, please go to iTunes. It really makes a difference in how we're able to show up in the iTunes charts so that more people can listen to Being Boss. Anyway, um, I need to start doing that very thing for my blog posts and asking people to share and pin those across their social media platforms. Yeah, I think that making it a good practice to give people the next step, like what's the next thing that you want them to do, is a really great way to make better use of content that you already have or that you'll be creating in the future. It's less about just posting it and hope they read it, but post it and then share it with a friend or, you know, forward this email or whatever it may be. Giving that call to action can sometimes be the point um, where you change what happens with the content you're already creating. And I think that we've done a really good job of systemizing our sharing across all platforms. So we have our Being Boss Digest email that goes out on Fridays that lets our audience know all the articles that we've posted, the the podcast that went live, the mini-sode, and it's just all in one place so that they don't have to come to our website every single day. I know that for me, my inbox has essentially replaced my RSS feed whenever Google's what was it called? Google Reader. Yeah, Google Reader, whenever that shut down about four years ago. Was it four years ago? Probably. I mean, it's been a while. That's kind of what killed consuming blogs in the way that I used to. So anyway, my inbox has kind of become my new RSS feed. And so in thinking about that, I think that we've gotten really good about reminding our listeners who are subscribed to our newsletter of what's gone live that week. We also systemize all of our content in our Edgar mm-hmm. Twitter. Is that Twitter and Facebook? Twitter and Facebook. Yes. So if you haven't listened to our episode with Laura 
Roeder of Meet Edgar, um, she did a really great job of talking about why it's really important to share content on social more than once because you don't want to let that content die. So I, I next want to just double check all of our social media automation and make sure that new content is going into those libraries and effectively being shared. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and... All right, so we just dove into a ton of things that we do around metrics and how we like use that to affect decisions and really help us, I don't know, shape our role in our business to one, have the most impact possible because neither of us want to be like wasting our time on anything. Um, or two, making the most impact with what it is that we're creating. Um, so now I want to talk about when that doesn't even matter. Oh, <laughs> yes. Going back to my blog post from 1992 about why metrics don't matter. Um, I OK, so I have changed my mind on metrics matter, whether or not metrics matter. I do think that metrics matter, but I don't think that data should matter whenever it comes to you having a creative outlet and staying authentic to what matters to you. I think that you need to say what you want to say whether or not anyone is reading it amen and like whenever it came to this scenario with the blog posts if you had not said something about wanting to stop blogging I never would have brought it up that your blog posts weren't doing well like if I could tell that it was something that you were just like going at with reckless abandon and loving it with every fiber of your being I would have just kept that little bit of info to myself forever and ever amen <laughs> however however um I don't think that was the case I know <laughs> you know it's funny because Emily on slack you know you said I, it's clear that you're not putting energy into this. And I was like, I am. I am putting energy into it. <laughs> and after a night of not very much sleep, I woke up feeling like, you know what? Maybe I'm not. Like, maybe I need to reevaluate where I actually am putting my energy and what excites me most about my business. So I think that you're right. I wasn't going at it with gusto. And it shook me up a little bit because I loved it so much. But I, I can go after this with gusto. I love what we're doing. Right? Me too. And with the book, like, actually, those metrics will matter because then the publisher will get pissed. <laughs> but, okay, for example, this, like, the podcast. Like, the our metrics have been something that we've kept an eye on. But even whenever things have dipped because they have dipped, it has not affected how we've shown up for this podcast in any way like if we had no one listening to this podcast I'm pretty sure we'd still be we'd still be here right now in this tulip room in Pennsylvania like recording this podcast for all 12 of our listeners like that would totally be a thing because this is something that we find creative fulfillment in and at that point metrics don't matter it's just whether or not like our internal metrics like how happy we are when we do it is the only metrics that matter. I think that data doesn't matter whenever you're really trusting your gut about what's next or whenever you're really trying to deepen your expertise in a new area or you're trying an experiment or a passion project. Data does not matter whenever it comes to those things. I completely agree. And I was actually serendipity, OMG. Um, I was reading today on, a, on the plane a an um, article in the latest Inc. magazine from Gary Vaynerchuk. Hey, Gary. I wish. Um, and he was talking about this exact thing, how like how it's less about data and more about your intuition. Like it's more about knowing what comes next in your business and being open to that than it is looking back at the things that have worked in the future so or in the past. So I do think that it it really is sometimes about putting the metrics away and just doing what you feel you need to be doing next. Um, but then again, I also think that I think that looking at the metrics, uh, like it's just one tool. It's one tool that you can use to move forward, but not the only tool. So yeah, numbers are one tool, but they're not always telling the whole story whenever it comes to everything that comes into your business and the content you're creating, why you're creating it, where you're sharing it, 
and where you show up and be seen. So that's the number one thing we want for you all is just to show up and do the work regardless of the metrics. If you, I I have to trust for our own business, if we keep doing the work and keep doing what we love the most and have the most energy around, that we will see that payoff. Yeah. And then whenever it comes to making the kinds of informed decisions that you want to to make carefully, um, that's when it is that you pull up metrics. It's like almost like the second step. Like first you do the thing you want to do. And then if you care, if it's really important for you for taking the next step, then you look at your metrics and you use them as you want or you don't use them at all. But I think a good entrepreneur kind of uses them smartly as well. So. <laughs> no, and you know, I think that I I started using metrics whenever I was ready to level up my business, whenever I was ready to go from making five, five figures to six figures and then going from making, you know, that to wanting to double it and really grow our business. I mean, not just money-wise, um, but the truth is I do, I do want to make great money and I do want to have great impact. And that comes with great numbers. Amen to that. So that, guys, is our On the Fence episode about metrics. <laughs> More or less, because because they do have a place in your business, absolutely. But, um, but they don't have to wear the crown, I think. Now I want to create a worksheet around tracking <gasps> your metrics. Yes. You'll have to give me guidance. I don't even know what to track. <laughs> Will do. So if you guys want to go check out our show notes at beingboss.club for this episode, we'll have a um, a nice collaborative worksheet on tracking your metrics because it is important. Putting my energy where it matters. (laughs) Amen. And we're out. Hey there, bosses. I've been around the block with email marketing platforms. I've used them for myself, set my clients up on them, and I've tested most of the systems out there. And what I learned is that it's not about a long list of features and a gazillion options. It's about a simple, easy to use interface that puts the most important content and metrics right at your fingertips. For my email marketing, I use ConvertKit. It's easy to use from sending out a blast to my list to having quick access to the metrics that allow me to make smart decisions for my business on the fly. One of the things I love most about ConvertKit, as a boss who knows websites and hungers for good metrics, is how easy it is for me to see how effective a form is on my website. Right on the dashboard, I get a bird's eye view of every form I have across my online presence. I can see what forms are performing best and see if it's because of where it's placed on my site or maybe from a new opt-in incentive that I'm trying out. Easy metrics like that are what allow me to keep my business fresh, and ConvertKit makes that possible. Try ConvertKit for free for 30 days. Go to ConvertKit.com slash BeingBoss to learn more. Thank you for listening to Being Boss. Please be sure to visit our website at BeingBoss.club where you can find show notes for this episode, listen to past episodes, and discover more of our content that will help you be boss in work and life. Did you like this episode? Please share it with a friend and show us some love by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Do the work, be boss, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, if... I say that. Thing. Right. Sorry, I cut this out. Hold cut on. this out. I gotta say, sound bite say time. It's time sound for a sound bite. Drop the mic. <laughs> Get ready to drop the mic. A remix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay.